Good day, grade 12 learners, and welcome to our last video with regards to the exam guidelines for your theory September trial paper. It's going to be a little bit um, long, but we have a lot that we need to go through. So I'm going to try and be, I'm going to try and be <laughs> as brief as I can. Okay. So with regards to paper two, which is your theory, the first thing they want you to look at and remember and take note of are the action words or verbs. Many times we come across this and they tell us to analyze something, classify something, compare or differentiate. And you might not be 100% sure of what they are actually asking you to do. So do go through this table. Um, if you haven't received it at school, let me know because I can always um, put a link in the description to uh, this file. Okay, I think I'll, I'll just do it anyway. Right. So here we have, for example, I'm not going to go through everything, but just so you have an idea. If we look at the action verb analyze, it means to find the main ideas. How are they related and why are they important? Here it tells us, uh, gives us an example, analyze the correct use of the of word processing uh, features in the following screenshot. In other words, break it into parts or sections, study each part, look at the detail. Okay, so this is what it's trying to tell us. If we go to... Um, classify that means to group concepts or ideas that are similar or have the same characteristics functions or belong to one another so please do go through this here we talk about uh, define so if they tell you to define the term fishing they want you to use short concise description of the main features what is it and what does it do in a sentence or two that's all a definition is however if you are asked to describe you are going to give the main features by expanding the statement so now you're not just going to say what spoofing is but you might give an example um, you know how it affects people etc okay um, you can see yeah you know, there's two tables of all of those things so please do go through that so when you are asked uh, those questions you you know using those terms you do understand what they need from you then true or false true or false has been a little bit of a problem as well i believe um, because of the following learners take note of this when something is true it is true you do not need to back up why it's true okay here they are saying learners are expected to write the word false and give the term to make the false statement true okay so um i know in in the past they would ask you uh, they would they would give you like statements and then they would say to you um is the statement true is it false so if it's true you just say true if it was false you have to give a reason as to why it's false so it's sort of half mark for each but they don't really give half marks so if you say false but don't give a reason then you wouldn't get the mark in this case what they're telling you for this exam is that they're going to give you a statement and you need to give the term in that statement that would actually make the statement false um, here they say, however, should a learner provide only the term to make the statement true, he or she should not be penalized. In other words, no mark will be allocated if only the word false appears. You see there? There's that story again, where you're not just going to um, put false, you must put the word or the term that's going to go into that statement in order to make it false. Right? So we might use a typical example um let me see now using something like phishing uh, is when you try to uh, con a user out of their banking details what would you change you're not trying to con the user you're trying to bait the user okay remember with phishing we're trying to get the user to do something so we, we, we throw in our bait and we're hoping that the user is going to bite that bait and give us what we want okay so you've just changed one term um, to make that statement true because it was a false statement now if it's a true statement we would then change that same word to make it a false statement so please just read um, the heading under true or false just to see what they actually want from you but generally if something is true it remains the same if it's false, you might have to back up why you're saying it's false. Then here's the breakdown of your scope. So 25 marks comes from short questions. That would be multiple choice, match the column, true or false. This is generally how things are. 
So it's really the same. Please with multiple choice questions. If you don't know the answer, try to work it out by process of elimination. I mean, multiple choice questions, you have four answers. So two of them have probably nothing to do with that question whatsoever. So you've basically got, even if you haven't studied that much, you've got a 50-50 chance of getting that question right. Look at the question, look at the answers, eliminate the first two that you know are completely wrong. And then, you know, mark off to say, well, okay, it's, it's between this one and this one. Um, if you really don't know what's going on, just choose one. But if you know the terms, if you have a good understanding of the terms, you'll be able to work out exactly what that answer is. Remember what I said to you? You want to go through, um, like with your multiple choice, you want to look at all the things that you know for certain. So you go and you answer those. Then you can go back to the ones that gave you a little bit of a hard time. Then you've got plus minus 25 marks in your section B from system technologies. Okay, this is computer hardware, software, peripheral devices, system software, uh, basic troubleshooting. So they might give you a scenario um, and then ask you questions on that particular scenario. You got about 15, quick, uh, 15 marks worth of questions on networks. Uh, you can see PAN, LAN, WAN, uh, websites, web technologies, all these things. Okay, so there's around about 15 marks for that. And then you've got 10 marks for information management. Bear in mind, this is section B. Okay, so that's 25, that's 35, 40, that's 50 marks for section B. Um, these questions are related to the formulation of key questions to locate data, choosing, locating, and accessing appropriate data sources. In other words, how we find um, information, how we take uh, data and turn it in into information, how we can check the accuracy around that. That's what they're looking for there. Uh, then continuing on, again, more on section B, social implication, the impact of ICT on society, legal, ethical, and security issues, uh, ergonomics, uh, we know that term, right? environmental issues, including green computing. So they're going to give you a scenario on green computing. That's usually what they do. Um, ask you, you know, how can somebody uh, practice green computing at home or in the school environment or at their workplace in solution development as well. Okay, so that's all for section B. Section C is around 50 marks here, they're telling us, and this will be based on an integrated scenario. So I know a lot of the times what they do is they'll give you um, the specs of a PC. And they'll give you a scenario where they say John is wanting to start a home office. You know, he's, he's, he's got PCs, two PCs with these specs. Um, and then they start asking you questions on them. They'll ask you, you know, um, what sort of printer should he be using? What kind of network can he use and why? Um, They'll, give, they'll probably give you details about if it's used for an office, you know, or just uh, maybe gaming or something like that. And then they'll usually ask you a lot of questions on the actual specs of the PC. So um, all of this would be built into the scenario that they're asking you worth 50 marks. Okay, they do however tell you that the content in the table above is not an exhaustive list of all the content. They're basically telling you it's not confined to just everything um, that they have there. The depth of knowledge required for all the existing concepts and terminology below includes things like the definition, purpose and function of something, the advantages and disadvantages, benefits, limitations, and the application of ICT or of an ICT environment. You're also going to be asked on things like uh, hard drives. So what is a solid state drive? What is a card reader? And that is why they are listing this here to make sure you understand because you might have the spec of a PC saying uh, it's got a one terabyte SSD. Okay, what does SSD stand for? What is an SSD drive? And why is it better to have an SSD drive than a traditional hard drive? Right? We know with an SSD there are no moving parts, which means it's faster, it's more durable, it's smaller, but it's going to be more expensive. Our card reader, same story. Um, then we have input and output devices, things like multi-touch screens, um, HDMI, 3D printers. On the communication side, uh, standards for wireless communication. Remember, it's at 802.11. That's our standard for wireless communication. Um, then you've got NFC, 
our near field communication and then video communication such as zoom and google meet as well so these are extra things that you must go through and understand it because they are going to be obviously wanting to examine you on the most up-to-date technology okay um, internet technologies your url shortener the internet of things right that was um part of one of the pets and then your autonomous vehicles you know self-driving vehicles they're going to look at things like drone technology so these are all the things you need to understand um you're also shaping and throttling remember this refers to your internet so um shaping right this is a technique whereby certain network services like the email and internet um, are given less priority which means like during certain times instead of you if you've got a 10 meg internet line you might only get five megs during that time um, instead of the full 10 and throttling occurs when your isp slows down your internet connection okay so these are all the things you need to look at geotagging is a couple of other things when it comes to cyber security ransomware um, click jacking screen lock pattern on your on your devices your authentication things like two-factor authentication um, how technology can benefit society so please again know all of these terms yeah you've got cryptocurrencies as well this is something i touched on last year already in one of my videos um, and we know cryptocurrencies is a form of virtual digital currencies bitcoins can be exchanged for other cryptocurrencies or other currencies rather um, products and services okay um, they say yeah, they've caused concern because they're often used for payment in criminal <laughs> activities yes it's fine but so has cash so <laughs> i'm not going to go into that <laughs> however more and more legitimate companies are accepting them as a means of payment so please do understand that you can see grade 12 there is a lot of information here a lot of terms so um, you just really need to go through this and understand this um, if you are looking for some more information on like you know what a blockchain is what cryptocurrencies are on that i do have a video um i think that's on my crypto education with carlin um that explains all of those things because you can see they are starting to bring those things in as well okay so grade 12s that's it from me this is everything you need to know in terms of your theory paper um, i hope you're really going to take the time to go through this uh, get your head around this get your head in gear for this so that you can just do your absolute best and i know you will so good luck and uh, let's see those great results that you're going to get from this paper